All right, when I expanded the canvas size, so you always want to do image size first. This is my desired finished print, right? It's just not filled with the composite yet. I set my image size. I make sure it's larger than 8 by 10, but not too much larger than 8 by 10. Like I could change it to, to 9 by 12 by 350, right? Then you sit up, say OK. That makes sure that this pixel grid, even though it makes my sketch look distorted, that pixel grid is high enough resolution to print my, my good photo references at a high quality. Now I'm just going to give myself space to work. So I dragged my guides all the way around it. And now I go to image canvas size, which has to come next. Canvas size does not give me a resolution. It's just going to grow the artboard or shrink it. So I'm going to grow it in inches to 40 inches by 30 inches. So if I were to go back to canvas to image size now, it's not going to be 8 by 10 anymore. It's all going to be 30 by 40 by 350. And the reason my guides are there is it shows me the area I actually want to, to have my finished artwork. So to make that a little bit more clear, I'm going to take my rectangular marquee and I'm going to let it stick to my guides to give me a rectangular selection, you know, that looks like that. And then I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it. And come on, it can do it. <laughs> to deselect the lasso, you can hit Command D. Yeah, I'm going to close. I don't have a lot open, but I'm going to close what I have. I'll even close preview here. Command J. Come on. Darn it. So I'm going to save this as a PSD to the desktop. There it is. I'm going to mark it green once it's fully in. And I'm going to close Photo P and I'm going to close all of these other things I have open. Pull them from downloads. So I'm trying to save memory here. My computer has been more problematic than yours, than the student computers. Yeah, it's going to close everything. So it doesn't reopen it when I uh, restart Chrome. Because I just want to use every bit of my working memory. That that working memory that's not going towards the screen recorder, I want going to photo P. Because we're working at fairly high resolutions. All right, now I can open up that PSD right in photo P. And now I'm going to use that rectangular marquee, grab within my guides and hit Command J, and it makes a duplicate. Then I can delete the background, right? So you're not distracted by all the other stuff in your sketch. And you might wonder, well, I already cropped down to it. Why did all that stuff come back? And that's a difference between Photoshop and Photo P. Photo P holds stuff that you crop out in memory in case you want to get it back. <laughs> and it's annoying that it does it, but if it ever helps you, then it's not annoying. So this kind of cleans up the memory. I'm going to hit Command S to save it. You'll see it change right there. And you'll see my little green tag go away when it updates. All right, now I'm actually going to fill this background. So if I do that same thing again, use the rectangular marquee selection, then do Command J, puts it on a new layer. Then I'm going to go to the background layer and I'm going to say Edit Fill. And I'm going to fill it with something that's a little nicer to my eyes because I have a bit of a headache. So I'm going to, so looking at bright white and definitely looking at a checkerboard isn't great for me. So I'm going to put it to gray. So edit fill gray at 100%. And then I don't really need my guides to show anymore. So I'm going to hit 
command semicolon or view uh, show guides command semicolon and just uncheck it right you can get them on and off with command semicolon so now I have my sketch on top of a gray working space and now is a good time to start bringing in my reference so this is what I want you to think of it as we talked about foreground middle ground background we're talking about landscapes for creatures you're talking about the parts of the creature some parts matter more than others. So in landscapes, we talked about how the middle ground really matters if you want three layers of depth. In a creature, the head really matters. The direction of the head is the first thing we look at, and it tells us how to read the rest of the creature. So I'm going to use the metaphor of building a car. And the most important part of a car is the engine. So when you have really high-end sports cars like Ferraris built in Italy, the engine is built by a team by hand. They don't build it right on top of the chassis of the car. They build it in their own clean workspace. So this is our blueprint. This will be the chassis of the car that we weld all the pieces on. And we're going to start with the engine. But first, I'm going to bring in the engine parts. So all the references that I think might work for the head, I'm going to bring in. I'm going to scale so that they fit to my sketch. This is one idea. Let's see. This was another idea. Because I like this, the shape of this head. It's about the right size. And I like to build the head from a few different components. I like this idea for the head to give some color. I need to tilt it down, right? You see how because I was using my sketch to find reference, all of these are at the same angle. Now, I bring it in. It comes in as a smart object. Pretty quickly, I can do a rough cutout. Like, I know I don't want anything except the head for this with maybe a little bit of that neck overlapping. So I'm just going to use my lasso tool lasso around what I want, and then I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it onto a new layer, and then delete and save the memory on the smart object. Right. I think that's the head I'm most interested in, and I don't want to overthink it. So I'll probably combine this head with this head. So then I'm going to rough cut around my baby black rhino here. Grab that head with some overlap for the neck, hit Command J, and then move that head off to its own place. Right. And then I'm already using a crocodile snout in my morning class, so I don't think I need this one. Now, this black rhino, I was thinking I could use it for some other reference too, but I'm going to delete it for now. And I'm going to put these two for the head. I'm going to select them both by holding down Command and highlighting both of them, or Shift and highlighting both of them. And then I'm going to click on the little folder icon at the bottom of Layers, because that will group them together into a folder. And I'm going to label that folder Head. <laughs> so this is the part. The team that's responsible for putting the head together, they have all their components. What's the next part? Well, what about the shoulders, the chest, the collarbone, everything the neck goes into? I'm excited about using this buffalo because I love the extreme shift from this camera angle. These really, really wide shoulders, the really narrow hips. I'm going to right click and flip that so it's facing the way my creature is. And just put it off to the side. It's already about the right size. What else do I have? I have this rhino. Which if I flip. That's one option. I like how it showcases the front legs a little bit more. I'm going to have to grow this one a little bit. Which does hurt its pixel quality. But just a little bit, and that's okay. 
I might even hold down shift and stretch it wider because I know I want more width than that collarbone, right? Because you can warp these. Now, because there's a lot of background there, I'm just going to use my lasso quick, and I'm just going to lasso around it. I'll even keep the shadow in there, though that will get erased. And then hit Command-J. And I see what's going on. And I'm accidentally doing these inside the head folder, so I need to move them outside of the head folder. And then delete the smart objects. So my buffalo, I got to move outside of the head folder. And I'm going to lasso around what I want. I know I don't need the buffalo's head. I just want these shoulders and the back hips. That's a nice component. And then I can erase the smart object. OK, so here are some of my assets for the body. So I'm going to hold down Shift, select both of them, put them in a, a group folder, and label that body. <laughs> Why not? So I've got the head team. I've got the body team. What's next? I need the legs. So what was I thinking? I have the duck. Huh, where did it go? I think it's, yeah, it's going on top of the last layer I used. So I have to move it out of the body. All right, so I have these duck legs. I'm going to immediately kind of cut them out, these little feet. Command J, get rid of the smart object. And move them off. And then are there any other legs? I have these feet. Oh, I have another part for the head I forgot about, the rhinoceros beetle. I'll move those off. And then I'm going to group those together. Hold down Shift. These are the feet. Okay, go back to my head folder. I'm going to bring in the beetle for that crest. Tilt it a little bit. Grow it a little bit while it's still a smart object. You know, transforming. Good. Right now, use my lasso. Just grab what I want, just the part of the head. It's a lot of funky textures. So get plenty of overlap. Command J. Delete the smart object. Great. Now is a good time to save. So Command S. It will update here on my desktop, and then I can mark it green again till the next update. Now, we're going to start with the most important part, the head. We're going to build that engine. So I'm going to take my favorite reference, and I'm going to move and size everything to that. So I'm going to put this reference, and I'm going to cut it out a little bit closer. Not perfectly, but just a little bit closer so I can see what the shapes are doing. Still lots of overlap. So this time, instead of Command J and then deleting the layer, which I could do, I can also say Select Inverse and then Delete. But I got to be on the right layer. <laughs> select, in, select Inverse and then Delete. All right, now I can take this rhinoceros head. And I can command, not command T. I can edit free transform. It should be shift command T in photo P, but I know it depends whether you're using Safari or not. So I'm just trying to do it from edit. And I'm going to hold down shift while I transform and kind of shift its perspective a bit. This is basically for the top forehead. Now, one thing I like to do at this point is I'll zoom in on that head. So I zoom in with Command Plus, then I hold down Space Bar. I get that little hand icon, and then I can move over to what I'm looking at. And I can see this in full resolution. And then I'm going to take, come on, I'm going to save it.